In today's episode of The Andy Godoy Show, I'll be reviewing the Sega Master System Visual Compendium by Bitmap Books. Stay to the end of the show to find out how you can... Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of The Andy Godoy Show. I'm your host Andy Godoy and today I will be telling you about the Sega Master System Visual Compendium which was kindly uh, sent to me by Sam from uh, Bitmap Books. So I'll be reviewing it, I'll be telling you a little bit about it and basically telling you how awesome it is and at the end I will tell you how you can actually win yourself a copy and again Big special thanks to Sam Dyer from Bitmap Books. So please check him out on uh, his website, bitmapbooks.co.uk, or follow on Twitter at Bitmap Books and on Instagram at Bitmap Books. So again, big thank you to Sam. So anyway, um, before I go on to that, then I want to quickly tell you what else I've got planned then. So I'll tell you, uh, well, I've already told you that I'm going to be reviewing that. I'll also be telling you my top 10 Sega Master System uh, games that I enjoy playing. And again, that's my own personal. Uh, top 10 so you guys may disagree or may agree with me and then last I'll be telling you about uh, well actually I'll be reading your comments uh, which are some of your favorite uh, Master System games so yeah I'm really looking forward to this episode especially because this book um, wow it is amazing so I'll tell you what let's get reviewing this book then so Ooh, whacking my microphone there. So, oh, disconnected my headphones. Right, so first things first in, this is it. This is the Sega Master System Visual Compendium. And again, Sam Dyer uh, did an amazing book. It is possibly my favorite one out of all the ones he's actually done. Now, obviously, he started off way back uh, with the Commodore 64 one, the Amiga one, the Spectrum one. And he's moved on to the NES, Super Nintendo, and I've got a few of those, but the one I was after was the Sega Mass System uh, Visual Compendium because I have got such a fond memory of the Sega Mass System. Before I actually tell you uh, my memories, uh, before I review this, I'll tell you the reason why it means so much to me. I mean, the ZX Spectrum is possibly my favorite um, computer of all time. But the Sega Mass System, wow, that really took things to a whole other level, you know. No game loading, arcade conversions, which they did loads of. And uh, the quality of the arcade conversions, a lot of the time, were better than a lot of the 8-bit computers and looked a lot more like the arcade counterparts. And I love my Sega Mass System. I had the one that had um, Super... Well, no, it wasn't Super Hang On. It was Hang On. It also had Safari Hunt, where you could use the light phaser. And also, I think if you pressed up and pressed two buttons at the same time, you could unlock the Snail Maze game with that really, really annoying music. And I loved it. And again, over here in the UK, it really ran sort of like everyone had one, not like in the States. In the States, it was a bit of a sort of like dark horse. Not many people had it. Whereas they had the, you know, like the NES there. There's only a few kids in my school that I knew of, actually, that had an NES. And the one I did was one of my best mates, Dan. And for whatever reason, he just had never let me play it. Damn you, Dan. Right, anyway, so again, let's look at this book then. So from the get-go then, one of my favorite things about this book is the, the, the sort of outer cover for it. Now, if you look at it, it's got one of those sort of things where... It, I don't know if you could hear that. It's If you slightly move it, it changes the image. And that really reminds me, as, as a kid, I would have um, those rulers, like a dinosaur ruler, where you'd move it and the dinosaur would move. I used to love it. But again, some, a great selection of games there, beautifully done then. So if I can get this out of its hard cover here... So I'll pop that to one side. And it's got some of my favorite games there, like... Um, like um, Kung Fu Kid, Quartet. I love Quartet, actually. Uh, Endure Racer and a few other little bits and bobs. So it quickly read what it says. It says, Sega Mass System Visual Compendium pays tribute to the amazing pixel art, product design, and graphic design um, associated with the iconic 8-bit system spread over 420 pages. Uh, the Mass System Visual Compendium contains over 150 of the best games. Now, what I want to say about this book from the get-go, before I do anything else, is there's lots of gaming books out there, and all of them are really great. I love and appreciate the time and hard work that goes into making this. But Sam's books 
are just that little bit better than everyone else's. And I'm sorry if I offend anyone, you know, like again, you know, everyone else's books that they do are, are amazing. You know, I, I can't take anything away, but Sam's books are just that little bit sort of like, you know, I, I don't know, you know, you've got like your like really good movies, you know, you've got your five star movies and you know, you then you've got your very good movies, but uh, Sam's books, again, amazing. Right. From the get go, you go into the little uh, opening page here. It is the artwork of the Sega Master System. The Master System is a very beautiful looking console. I love it. I, th- I love the design. I love the way it had that sort of blueprint sort of look at the front. Well, I, you know, I, again, I, I've got to apologize if I'm sounding like I'm sort of like um, not saying all, all the other retro gaming books are, are, the, are out there are good because they are. They really are good. But I mean, like, like I said, this book, especially, and you know, the Specky one, because I love the Specky, are amazing. Right. So it's got a foreword there by uh, Matt Kearney there. Oops. And what else has it got? I mean, this book has got everything. It's got mastering the system, a little bit about the Sega Mark III. Um, I'm just flipping through here. But I mean, again, like with all Sam Dyer's books, you know, you've got loads of info. I, again, let me show you this diagram thing here. It is amazing. I just love that. That's why I loved about the Sega Mass system. I think cosmetically, it was a lot better prettier the console itself and the nes the nes just looked like a brick really and um again i had maybe it's nostalgia but i love the color scheme of what the sega mass system had you know and um it was just brighter it was more colorful whereas the nes and again i'm not knocking the nes i love the nes was a little bit more washed out now Look at the screenshots on this, and this is Hang On. Uh, I remember playing the arcade, Super Hang On. This came free with my Sega Master System. Really bright and vibrant. And the weird thing is, back then, I just played it with a simple TV aerial comp- uh, thing. What was it? Com- component? Composite? Whatever. I don't know the ins and outs of it all. But it was sort of a bit blurry. And it wasn't until years later, uh, I started playing my consoles, like many years later, on a CRTV via RGB. And I was like, holy damn, I've missed out on a lot of things. My console could do a lot more than I thought it could do. You know, that was a great thing about the Sega consoles, like the Mass System, the Mega Drive, they could do RGB, whereas the Super Nintendo and NES, I don't think you could do unless you have them modded. So let's show you some of my favorite parts then. Teddy Boy... Oh, I loved that game back in the day. Uh, arcade conversion. Uh, fun little game. Really cheap, actually. And that was the thing is you had your more full price games and you had some of your uh, cheaper games as well. Action Fighter. Now, this is one of the games where I actually prefer the home console uh, version to the arcade. And I think with Mass System, a lot of the games, I actually prefer the um, home version, I suppose, to the arcade game. You've got an interview there with Steve uh, Hanawa. Um... I'm just flipping through this. Obviously, Alex Kidd, Miracle World. It's like a fold-out, spread-out page there. This has got everything, you know, you want if you're a Sega Mass System fan. It's got some games I haven't really played that I'm really curious to check out. But again, I'm not going to show you everything because, you know, I recommend that you go out and buy the book from uh, Bitmap Books, you know, so definitely check it out. You, There is a way you can win one of these books for free. Uh, big thanks to Sam Dyer for this, by the way, and I'll tell you how to do that at the end of the show but i mean i love this ghost house just one of my favorite games and that was like a disc game like well not disc card game that you could put into the little slot and those games were a lot cheaper oh it's got the ninja and again i think the mass system really lends itself visually um just with its brightness i'm, I'm going to show you a few more pages look there's pro wrestling simple but effective again that's an arcade conversion of a wrestling game and i think the arcade game actually had uh, female japanese wrestlers oh look at this snail maze game <laughs> how awesome is that i never could get far i think it's because back in the day my tv was very very little Ah, oh, safari hunt fun for about 10 minutes and then like it just loops and just the music gets on your nerves but I mean obviously early Mass System games they did get better as the you know as the years went on you had better arcade conversions I mean you've got Afterburner um, Shinobi Double Dragon Dynamite Ducks oh man I love this Sega Mass System Um, and again look here we go I'll show you something else Endure Racer 
I like the arcade game. In the arcade, I like the ZX Spectrum version, but this did something very different. It gave it like an, a 3D isometric look, and it's fun to play. You know, it's got a few little power-ups and stuff like that. Very, very simple. And the good thing about Enduro Racer, actually, the Japanese version has extra levels that we didn't get in here in the UK, or I think even in the US, actually. But this book, visually, um, it is beautiful. Again, like with Sam Dyer's, all his book, you know, all the screenshots are just bright. He's picked his screenshots very, very well. Then you've got some sort of like photography of some of the work. I don't know if it's um, Matt um, Daenerys from um, Retro Asylum that still does the photography. I know he used to in some of the earlier books. Uh, if he does, brilliant photography though, mate. But uh, look at that. You know, just like I love the control pad. Uh, the only thing I didn't like about the control pad, the D-pad itself, well, it's not the D-pad, whatever you want to call it. It was, you know, sometimes if you were pushing to the right, if you're playing a game like R-Type, you'd accidentally push up diagonally because it's just, it's not like the Nintendo D-pad. That was one thing the D-pad had, um, you know, on the NSS was slightly better. But again, I mean, like I said, loads of sort of like things and facts about it, loads of screenshots. And that's what I love. And there is something I do want to show you here, actually. Also with the book itself, you get yourself some of these really, well, I say some, you get one um, of these 3D glasses. And if I can open it up, I should have done this beforehand. It does stick back on. I just thought I'd stick it just to make it look a little bit more impressive while I was doing the podcast. And obviously I can't see without my glasses because I'm blind, but look at me. 3D glasses. Now, the mass system had like um, some 3D games. Oh, God, I'm going to get like a sore head out of that. But also, there is a few 3D um, pictures that you can look at as well. So how cool is that, you know? I might not look cool, but I mean, 3D pictures. And again, I remember I didn't own the uh, th the 3D-ness um, games or the 3D glasses. And I think they go for quite a price now. But my nephew did, and um, he, he got loads of stuff like that. Oh, Space Harrier 3D, Outrun 3D was so many good games. But I think the Sega Master System is probably one of my favorite games. And this is the reason why I love this box so much, you know, Oh, man, I'm just... This is my favourite book, you know. And Oh, it's even got a bit here about arcade conversions, you know. I'll quickly tell you some of the ones like Golden Axe, Enduro Racer, which I've mentioned, Fantasy Zone. Uh, what's that one? Blade Eagle 3D. Yep, I remember playing that game. I also had this weird joystick. I'll show you as well. And again, this book really just starts reminding me of everything. I've got to just make sure I don't rip it. There we go. The weird sort of like joystick thing that you had. I always felt like the um, joystick was on the wrong side. It was on the right-hand side as opposed to the left-hand side. And it just really threw me off. So good idea. It just didn't work very well, I think. But again, look, I'm looking at this. got Cyborg Hunter, Double Dragon. Okay, uh, you've got a few interviews here. And again, I, I just love looking at uh, screenshots of games, you know. Um, it, it's just it's just that nostalgic trip really just tr takes me back, you know. I, after reading this, I'm just looking at it, I really want to play a lot of these games, you know. Shinobi. Uh, oh, I didn't even know they had like um, a trackball as well. I'll show you. Look at that. So it does show not just the games, but a lot of sort of like the accessories that you could get there as well. So that is awesome. Absolutely awesome. So, all right, so reviewing it again, you know what? I'm not going to just, I'm not going to beat around the bush. This this book is a five out of five. It is just absolutely fantastic. If you're a retro gaming fan, not just a Sega Master System fan, definitely recommend that you get this amazing book by a Sam Dyer. And don't just get this book. I mean, he's got some amazing books at his website as well. You've got all the other sort of visual compendiums like the NES, Super Nintendo, Amiga, Commodore 64. And he's got... a bunch of other uh, sort of like things there. I, th I think he also recently did one on Metal Slug and like um, there's one that's got like arcades. I get, again, check it out. Bitmapbooks.co.uk. Uh, this gets the Andy Goddard uh, seal of approval. So a five out of five, you know, like again, fantastic. And I'll probably do like a little write up actually at some point. So anyway, let's move on to the next section then after I just rambled on and reviewed that my top 10 uh, mass system games and again this is my own personal top 10 you guys may agree or disagree with me you know but again here we go right at number 10 California games 
Now, I love this game, and I think this is the best version of California games on any console, computer, or anything like that. And again, there's a decent version on the Mega Drive. There's a pretty decent version on the Atari Lynx, uh, even on the Commodore 64, I think. But the Master System version just works so well, and the Master System version has a level which the Sega Mega Drive doesn't have. And also, if you do well on a certain level, uh, you get these weird little tiles which give you little power-ups, whether it's on the bike, or on the surfboard, or on the, is it called the hacky sack? But again, so the game's got like a number of different events. You've got, what was the first event? Like the um, the ramp on the skateboard, then you've got the little hacky sack thing, then you've got the, um, what was it? The roller skating, surfing, and it's just out of fun. You can play up to one to eight players on like one control pad of two players. You take turns the way it works. It's all about getting the highest score. Great game, great you know, version of it, really. And to me, I think this is probably the best version as well. Really bright, really colourful, really adds to sort of like California games, really makes it feel like it's summer right then. And number nine then, an arcade conversion, and that is R-Type. Now, the 8-bit computer versions I played were all really good, well, apart from the Amstrad, but there is one now, which is pretty good, which is like a fan remake. Um, the Call of 64 version it was like a different game, I think, that got turned into it. Pretty good still. Specky version, um, fantastic. I think that was Bob Pape. <laughs> uh, f- phenomenal. Um, but the Sega Mass System version... At the time, I felt it was like arcade perfect, you know, full of color. Okay, it had flickering, had cool sound. But the other thing I want to talk about, it just felt like it had absolutely everything. You look at it now compared to the arcade game, yeah, it's slightly scaled down, but it's all there in one cartridge. Plus, you get an extra level that is not on any of the other versions. And I think you access that by going into one of the later levels. You shoot something, you fly to the top, and you access a whole new different level. Feels very different, obviously, because I don't think the original designers made it. But um, great game, you know. And this is where I played R-Type the most. I mean, I played it on the Specky absolutely loads. But again, I always felt that version was a little bit too slow, and it just didn't feel quite right. But whereas the Sega Master System version is still one of my favorite versions, and I, I, I tend to sort of go, between the arcade game and the Master System version. All right, at number eight, Psycho Fox. Now, I absolutely love this game. First played at my cousin's house, went round to his house. He had the game. After playing this game, I wanted it. So it's a platformer, and that's one of the things I thought we didn't have enough on the mass system were platforming games. You know, in NES, you had loads. You had Mario, you had your Mega Man, Castlevania. It's all slightly different variations on the platform genre. But the mass system at the time really didn't have that many. But Psycho Fox was beautiful same like in mario you jump at people's heads to defeat them uh it's a platformer but the beauty was you could turn into a bunch of different animals uh you could turn into a tiger a hippo uh what was the other one well obviously a fox um there is a game similar to it on the nes kid cool i think it is or something like that I don't know if it's the exact same level layout, but it's just a little boy and it's exactly the same thing. You can do different abilities and stuff like that. But I mean, on the mass system, I played this game nonstop. You know, I've never finished it. It's a bit tough, actually, uh, for memory because the character tends to slide quite a lot. But again, it's really interesting character sprites. And again, all of these games I'm talking about, appear in Sam Dyer's book. It is phenomenal. And there is sort of like a spiritual successor to it, you know, Decap Attack or the, whatever the Japanese version is called. And that's an interesting take on it as well because you've got the horror-themed version, which is Decap Attack, and then you've got the Japanese version, which is bright and colourful, looks more like this. And he chucks around a little egg that looks like Dizzy. Right, so at number seven, another arcade conversion this time, and it is the Ninja. So this the arcade was called uh, Ninja Princess, and I think that's also on the NES as well, but uh, I've played it. It doesn't quite feel right in the arcade or on the NES. Played it on the Sega Mass System. The controls work phenomenal. You get certain shots that you can shoot forward. Other shots are, are like work diagonally, so that really, really works. 
you know. And then if you press both buttons together, your ninja disappears. You got to rescue the princess this time. For whatever reason, they changed it from being a princess to the actual ninja who has to save the princess. And I love the variation on this game. It's very simple graphics. You know, you go from the bottom of the screen to the top. Then you've got like a sort of like scrolling isometric view when you've got passing through these rocks and big boulders. Ninjas appear out of nowhere. And you it's just so good. Nice variation. And again, this... Because it was designed for a home console, it's easier than the arcade game. I've yet to finish it, but again, it is a fun game. And again, it appears in Sam Dyer's book. I'm totally plugging this. And again, you know what? Buy everyone else's book, you know, like Chris Wilkins does like his books. They're amazing as well. Uh, you've got other books like the Atari book as well, which... Um, you know, the ones with the Atari 2600 artwork. It's phenomenal. Buy all the books, guys. Go out and buy them all. Just Google it and you'll find it. Right. Um, at number six, Kung Fu Kid. Ah, let me show you Kung Fu Kid. Kung Fu Kid's this little fella here. Well, really spilled my water. This little guy here. And again, platform game, but Kung Fu based. And I'm all about my Kung Fu still. I'm a man in my 40s and I like watching sort of like um, Kung Fu films and games that where you can beat the crap out of people left right and center it's jolly it's cheerful it's got bouncy music you fight against these chinese sort of vampires that bounce along and the music's so damn catchy and you just do little flying kicks you can spin around in the air you've got these little stars that you can throw sometimes on late levels you can kick these little worms that can just shoot past the enemies um it is amazing oh before I carry on, I do want to mention there is an amazing um, Sega site. Um, you know what? If you just Google Sega Master System website, uh, it will come up. I know Ian Wall, uh, I think he runs that. And I think he and some of the, his friends actually contribute to the book. So again, everyone that contributed to this book, well done, guys. It's my favorite book. Um, really appreciate the hard work and effort. And um, okay, so yeah, Kung Fu Kid, phenomenal game. Number five, Rocky love Rocky. Rocky, you know, I love the film series, Sylvester Stallone. He's just phenomenal. And to play a game like this, which is so simple, but it works, you know, you just got two punches, punch, 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 punch. And what was the other one? And uh, to duck or something like that, press both of them and you can block. Um, the only thing that I would say was wrong with the game is you can play the game in two players but you can you you'll be somewhat outmatched because Rocky is sort of like a a medium sort of character strength wise and thingy wise. Drago is the strongest one. Mister T, uh, Clubber Lang is strong, and then you got Apollo, who's a slightly weaker one. So if you were to play, say, someone plays Rocky, someone else plays as Apollo, it's a bit unfair. If someone wants to be Drago and then someone else to be Rocky, again, Drago's a lot stronger. Um, I never played it officially. Uh, sorry, I never completed it officially. By um, but I had I used the rapid fire um, accessory as well because you could punch even faster. It's the only way I've done it. It's the only way I could do it. But I mean, I love the cutscenes where you're training as well. Big, bold, beautiful graphics in between rounds. Oh, I love it. The music's phenomenal. Oh, and you can actually get the action figures of the Rocky uh, characters from the game. Um, again, just Google it and you'll be amazed how amazing they are. Right, so next up then is an RPG platformy game. I don't normally like uh, RPG sort of style games unless it's Zelda, really. Um, but Spellcaster then, wow, what a game. Um Set in the ancient times, you play our hero who's just wearing... It looks like he's wearing like a purple jumpsuit and uh, or a purple sort of shell suit. And you just got to go and save like these people. And it sort of switches between a platforming game where you do fireballs and you can jump, you can charge a fireball. You can shoot these weird flying creatures that which release these blue orbs. And the orbs give you sort of like, I think, more energy or something like that but then it goes into a point and click style thing when you get to certain towns you know you can sort of like search you can ask people questions by pointing and clicking you can look for clues and also you get to sort of like do some good battles earlier on the game is nice and easy it's fun uh, for years i was stuck in a place where i was inside a spaceship 
couldn't figure it out, Googled it, figured it out finally after all these years later, and then it took me to a level which was too damn hard, so I've given up on that game, but I love it. Just the hours invested, the story, you know, there's a bit where you're going on a boat, and oh, I love it. Right, next up, at number three then, Castle of Illusion. Now, I love the Illusion series. Castle of Illusion, the mass system, is a thing of beauty. Not as gorgeous as a Sega a Mega Drive version, but again, it can't be. It's 8-bit, but what it does on an 8-bit sort of home console is just outstanding. It is truly outstanding. You know, it's really, really beautiful. It, it is absolutely stunning. And um, again, similar but different to the Sega Mega Drive version. You know, that's what I like about it. It's it's a different game so you know if you had a mega drive and a mass system you could you'd have to buy both just like with a sonic the hedgehog you know you'd have to buy both so um which is what i did back in the day right so at number two then another arcade conversion and this is shinobi now shinobi i love this version more than the arcade game and the reason being is you get an energy bar the arcade game shinobi it's tough you get hit you're dead that's not fair. That's not the way you play it. Oh, gosh, these things have hurt my ears. Right, anyway, um, the music's there. The layout's slightly different. The graphics somewhat scaled down, but they work. They look so good. Back in the day, even to this day, I can only get as far as the spinning statues, which you've got to get. And I'm assuming that I need a certain sort of weapon to try and get them. But I, I love this game. Um Actually, maybe it should be one of the games that you can get the FM chip on. There's a bunch of um, Sega Master System games that use the FM chip. Uh, it was like a thing that they had in Japan that, that was like on their Sega Mark III. And um, you can try it out via emulation if you Google it as well. You see which games. And it really adds a lot more depth and makes it sound more like Mega Drive sort of like sounding. Right, anyway, at number one then, my number favorite Sega Mega Drive, Sega Mega Drive, Sega Mass System game, completely forgot what console I was talking about, is Wonder Boy, The Dragon's Trap. I love this game. It is amazing. Love Wonder Boy the Arcade. Love that the Sega Mass System. Brilliant. Love Monsterland. I love the 8-bit versions. Love the Sega Mass System version. Then this came out, and it just felt like I could go anywhere. I could change into different characters if I beat a certain boss. It, again, it did the whole sort of like um, Metroidvania thing it, before it really became a big thing. And it even did like the whole sort of like, this is what happened on the previous game to sort of like bring you up to date and you know and symphony of the night did that as well uh, many years later but i mean i love the look of the game it's bright it's colorful and that's what i love about the sega mass system game the color palette just really lends itself so well where everything looks so good and that's the reason why i'm saying get yourself this book you know because the book really just showcases how beautiful the color palette is on a Sega Master System. It's so damn good. And again, Wonder Boy Dragon's Trap is such a good game. For ages and ages and ages, I only had a three Xbox 360, like more recently. And then I thought, I'll never get myself a modern console. I don't need a modern console. I found out that Wonder Boy was getting like a remake on the PS4. I bought a PS4 just for that. And since then, I've bought a bunch of other games. But anyway, that is my top 10. Now, what I'm going to do then is quickly read out your uh, favorite Sega Mass System games. So, Steve Erickson from Retro Asylum, he says, Cloud Master. Oh, I love another great arcade conversion. Psycho Fox, yep. Yeah. And Shinobi. Jay Ifold says, Rocky. Ghostbusters. What a conversion, actually. I love this version. Probably my favorite version. Then the C64 version, and believe it or not, the Atari 2600 version I really enjoy. Specky version, not that great. Um, he also says, A Wonder Boy in Monsterland. Fantastic game. Later on, I'll tell you who's a big fan of that game. Right, Ian Wool from that uh, Sega website, which I cannot remember, but check it out. You know, really lovely bloke, actually. Kicked my ass in Street Fighter uh, too. Um, okay, he says, Psychic World. He says, the mass system equivalent of Mega Man. I've never played that. How have I never played it? I, I'm going to play it because I, I, I'm always on the lookout for mass system games that I, I, you know, I haven't played. I tend to stick to the ones I have played. Um, okay, Sonic 1, he says, better than the Mega Drive version. 
Um, I wouldn't say it is better than the Mega Drive version because it hasn't got the loop the loop. Some of the levels are a bit trickier to navigate because the screen doesn't scroll as well. And it doesn't go as fast, actually. But then again, I only ever played it back in the day uh, on a PAL uh, sort of where it ran slower. Maybe if I play it now on a modded console running sort of like on full speed, it would play better. Right. Uh, Master of Darkness, he says it's better than Castlevania. Um... I think so. I think I'm going to I'm going to say it. I might offend people, but I think Master of Darkness is better than Castlevania 1. And the reason why I say that as well is because I've played it recently and the game is beautiful. Fair enough the game came out a few years after Castlevania. Um it's pretty much the same game but with a different character, you know, set in Victorian times. I think you're looking for Jack the Ripper or whatever. Um it's a good looking game, great music, really recommend it to everyone. Right, Stephen Smith, uh, who runs uh Press Starts, I think, in Leeds. Definitely check that out. Amazing retro bar. Says Alex Kidd and Shinobi World. Gotta agree with Alex Kidd and Shinobi World is my favourite Alex Kidd game. I'm not a fan of Miracle World, to be honest with you, or the BMX Trials, or the other high-tech, or the Lost Stars, but Shinobi World, what a game. Saved up for it, I remember playing it, I bought it from HMV, finished it within a day, but wow, I love it. Try to finish it recently, can't do it. Right, uh, Ash Malkin says, I never played on the mass system that much, to be honest, as most of my 8-bit gaming's on the Commodore, However, I did really get into the homebrew version of Bruce Lee on the Master System a few years ago. Well worth a look. And yeah, it is a great game. Great game. And I think it suits the Master System perfectly. Obviously, they've uh, redone the graphics. It's not a big game, but it's a fun little game. And I'm thinking if this game had come out back in the day, if it had come out on the little disc thing, I would have bought it in a heartbeat. Mm, the, yeah, Definitely would have pestered my parents to buy him. Right, Jump Cancel, amazing podcast. He says, Mass System was the first system that was all mine. Games that stand out for me are uh, Sega Ninja. Great little arcade port. For some reason, they changed the female ninja. But it's still a kick-ass game. R-Type, same as me, mates. And you put other games. Uh, I played a lot with Fantasy Zone, Chase HQ, Psychic World, Alex Kidd and Shinobi World, Shinobi, and for some strange reason, a shit ton of parlor games. Don't know why. Right, so uh, Darren Borg from Arcade Perfect, he says, Wonder Boy in Monsterland. And that is uh, Dazzy's, probably, I think, one of his favorite games ever, if not his favorite uh, Wonder Boy game. Wonder Boy 3, The Dragon's Trap, Spellcaster, Lord of the Sword. Uh, let me rip this paper out and chuck it away because it's just getting in the way. I've got my little show notes here. Uh, Castle Illusion, Game Ground. I've played it briefly, I think, on the Sega Mega Drive. I've not played the Mass System version. Okay, Sal Sheard uh, says, Kung Fu Kid, Black Belt. Oh, yes, I'm so glad you mentioned Black Belt. Black Belt is amazing. It's like a hun- Hakutu no Ken, uh, the uh, Japanese version. I never knew that until I discovered emulation. And then I was just going through loads of games. What game is this? What game is that? Started playing this one because it looked interesting. I thought, hold on a second. This is Black Belt. So basically, you know, we got like a different, you know, like looking version of the game. It's interesting to play both of them at the same time. You know, like if you can to compare them, you know. Um, he also says Choplifter. Fantasy Zone, Wonder Boy, Kensington, or however you pronounce it. Great golf. Good game, actually. I love my golf games. I'm a sucker for golf games. And that is one of the ones I used to spend ages playing at Space Harrier and Thunderblade. Thunderblade I really enjoyed as well. I think it works on the mass system, not so much on the 8-bit computers. All right. Jonathan the Muscle Keen says, my first console. So I'm saying Alex Kidd and Miracle World. So many memories. And I'm kind of glad John didn't say Alex, the kid. Oh, it infuriates me when people say that. Right, Jay Drury says, The Mass System was my first console. My parents got me the original model out of a local ad in the newspaper with about 10 games. I was so happy. It says, Castle of Illusion, California game, Secret Commando slash Rambo. Yep, because that did get like a um, region variation. Asterix, yes, what a great game. Don't think you guys got that in the States. The Lucky Dime Caper, The Ninja... Phenomenal games there. James Wilson says, Alex Kidd in Miracle World. So yeah, that's the reader feedback. Really, really appreciate that because that makes the show a lot more interesting, guys. And again, guys, get yourself this book. It is phenomenal. Five stars from from, uh, from me, basically. Now, before I tell you how you can win this bad boy, um, 
I want to quickly just tell you a few little things. I have got a Patreon, guys. Uh, you don't have to sort of like donate. It's just there. If you enjoy the work I'm doing and you can just donate, whatever. There is no tears. Just donate as little as much as you like. Everything like that will go on towards me producing these shows and maybe getting a few little bits that I can talk about during the show as well. So I really appreciate that, guys. So check out my Patreon. I will be sort of like including a little link on the show notes. Also, um, don't forget to check out my um Twitter. So on Twitter, I'm Andy Godoy Show. It was slightly different, but I've changed it. So it's Andy Godoy Show. And on Instagram, I'm the Andy Godoy Show. And most of all, don't forget to check out Get to the Chopper podcast. And that is the Facebook group. And I'll leave a little link around as well. And it's the one with a Jurassic Park inspired logo. And it's a great group. We talk about games, retro games, new games. We talk about TV shows, films, cartoons, music, just everything really. It's a great group. Honestly, I have so much fun with it. You know, everyone's really, really nice and chilled out. And if you haven't already, please check it out. And also, um, why not check out my YouTube channel, the YouTube channel, um, like the videos, share the videos, leave a comment, you know, things like that help me grow my YouTube channel. And it really gives me sort of like a bit of an ego boost, basically. Oh, I've got issues. Right. And also don't forget to, um, like subscribe to uh, Get to the Chopper on iTunes. Uh, leave me an iTunes review. There's like about 24 reviews there. I could do with a few more. Uh, share it with your friends, you know. And again, we got like Get to the Chopper. We do good film, bad film. We've got the Four Horsemen. We also do uh, the Andy Godoy Show. I also do the ZX Spectrum podcast. So, you know, I try and entertain you guys with a lot. So a little review would go a long way. Thanks very much. Right, so anyway... You want to win this book? You want to know how you can win this book? Right. So in a little bit, I'm going to post something up on Instagram. So you you know what? I cannot remember what I've got to say on this. So, okay. So to enter, you know, so you want to be in with a chance to uh, win this. All you need to do is follow me at Get to the Chopper Podcast on Instagram. Also follow Bitmap Books on Instagram. You've got to like this post, tag one of your friends on the post when I've done it and that's it but the beauty is you can enter as many times as you like but you can enter uh, by tagging one more f- and, and, and a different comment so say for example I've, you've commented say you want uh, Rich you know to sort of like he's your friend you can do another comment tag another friend so tag as many friends as you want in the comments on my Instagram post, and I'll be posting that later on today. So, uh, and I'll decide a winner later on in the week. I will announce it on another podcast then, guys. So, yeah, that's how you can win a copy of the Sega Master Visual Compendium. It's a phenomenal book, and like, like I said before, there's, some amazing, there's so many amazing books out there. Um, I do feel personally that um, Sam's books are just like, wow, that, you know, like, they're like the Tyson Fury of all the books, you know, but a, a lot prettier. And there's some other amazing books out there as well. So check them all out, buy them all. Um, but again, you can go to bitmapbooks.co.uk um, and you can um, buy one of these or you can just enter the competition. Anyway, I'm rambling on now. I'm going to go and play some Sega Master System games. I've been Andy Godoy. See you all next time and goodbye.